What's up, everybody? It's the Amish Country Mets fan. I am back. And let's have a quick chat. So why have I been missing? Well, for one, I've been super busy at work. Two, let's be real. This offseason has been boring. And listen, it's not a bad thing. Two can two things can be true. Um, David Stearns, I think, has done a, a pretty solid job in building a, a solid team around the margins, right? He's added a lot of depth. He's uh, added some key pieces that I think will very much help this team. Um, I like what he's done um, with the bullpen and whatnot. He's been, let's be real, he's been he's been pretty frugal. Um, people joke, um, Milwaukee Mets, blah, blah, blah. Um, but he, he set his sights on what he wanted to spend on, and he's spending his money wisely. And to me, that's better than just throwing money away and throwing money at the problem when the talent out there to, to me, and it seems like to him, doesn't really warrant throwing that money away. He had his one guy, Yamamoto. Um, that was my guy, too. And that was where he, he was planning on really spending the dollars and it didn't happen. He signed somewhere else, right? And once that happened, that changed the, the dynamics of the offseason. And listen, I'll fully admit I was wrong about this offseason. Um, I thought at the beginning of the offseason, I thought he'd want to come in and make a big move just kind of off the bat to like, like, I don't know, stake his claim, say I'm here, whatnot. And I guess Yamamoto would have been that move. Um, but it didn't happen, right? So, and then I thought from there, like, if he did get Yamamoto, we wouldn't see, like, I didn't think we were going to get, like, Otani and Soto and these guys. I thought maybe we'd see a bigger push for a a, a DH, um, maybe a, a bigger push for maybe another more formidable arm in the, in the rotation. And I thought... At some point, we'd see a, a trade for a like an established eighth inning guy. I, I thought that was going to come via trade. I was wrong. I was wrong about all these things, but that's not a bad thing. Um, like I said, I I think this was wise. I think at some point the payroll needed to be kind of reset. We're spending millions and millions of dollars on guys that are not playing for this team, um, and that's not a way to succeed, right? So <clears throat> it's smart to do things the way he's done. But let's be real, it's been boring. Like if you were expecting any kind of excitement, it just hasn't happened. The names we brought in aren't exciting. Let's be real. Sean Manaya is probably the most exciting name we brought in. But that's fine, right? So you don't have to win the like when we have been flashy and we have thrown money at big names, it hasn't worked out for us anyway. So Doing it this way, to me, is, is not a problem. Is this a high-ceiling team? Not necessarily, no. This is like, you're looking at like a mid-80s win team, in my opinion. If things break right. Things break wrong, man, it can be a 70-something win team. Let's, I, I got to be honest with myself. Um, so I don't have huge expectations going into the season. And maybe that's where some fans are like upset. They want to have those expectations. They want to win that World Series. They bring up that three to five year bullshit. Um, but it is what it is. And and listen, the offseason's not over, right? So yes, spring training's about to start, but there's all these guys that haven't signed yet. Snell's out there, Montgomery's out there. Not that I'm saying we're getting either of those guys. Uh JD Martinez, um, Solaire. There's a ton. There's still a ton of freaking players that haven't signed, and it's super late, and it's crazy. And so you never know what's going to happen, right? I'm sure David Stearns, I think I heard in that Q&A he did last night, he said still looking at the trade market. Um, and he's probably, I'm still he's sure he's still making calls out to guys, and if that price drops, if the gears drop to where the team feels comfortable, where he feels comfortable, then yeah, I could see maybe adding something else. But realistically, at this point, I think the team is what it is. 
Um, it'd be nice to be pleasantly surprised. It'd be nice to add JD Martinez. My biggest goal outside of getting Yamamoto was to bring in a DH, a legitimate solid DH. Um, and I know, I know some people really believe in Vientos. And don't get me wrong, I love what I've been seeing of, of the kid. He's working his ass off. He's down in spring training early. He's been working with Lindor. He's working on his defense. Apparently, he he is in the mix with Brett Beatty too for the third base job. Um, I don't know if his defense has improved that much, but hey, we will see. Stearns obviously has some belief in him. Um, but if he if that is his role, if he somehow third base is his role, then we do still need a DH outside of that. So, um. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what, what the move is there. Let's be real. Not you, We've seen, we always, every year, spring training, right before spring training, see stories about um, guys and how they're in the best shape of their lives and how they've been working so hard and how they look phenomenal and they've adjusted these things and this and that and the other and it doesn't always translate to results on the field in the regular season. So while I want to be confident in Mark Vientos, I, I, I'm sorry. I still have that little bit of trepidation. I still have that fear that he ain't it. So we'll see. I mean, J.D. Martinez could not be it, right? Like how many times have we seen the Mets sign a guy, older guy like that, and, and they come here and they just don't do anything? Um, JD Martinez could be Adrian Gonzalez. Remember that move? Um, so like it, I know that's a possibility. So I'm not saying, oh, we have to sign JD Martinez and he's the answer to all our prayers. But personally, I would feel a little more comfortable with a guy like JD, an established bat. Um, a guy that obviously Vientos could learn from just hitting and other guys, not just Vientos, but just from a hitting standpoint point the guy's been one of the best hitters in the game for years um but yeah man this could this offseason could turn out to be a, a blessing and a great thing and the Mets could be better than than any of us expect but it doesn't change the fact that it has been boring and, and it has been boring to talk about it's been boring to just regurgitate the same topics over and over and over again and just like kind of repurposing them into like another conversation to be had about the same crap and some people like to do it some people could talk about that forever <sighs> not for, it's, it for a while i was trying i was doing it but it's, it's gotten old like i'll be real like i want to watch games i want to dissect the games i want to dissect what we see in spring i want to dissect lineups um that's what i'm excited for at this point the offseason turned out from an excitement standpoint to be a dud to me you could disagree with that if you want that's fine everybody has their own opinion but to me from like an excitement standpoint of like making moves and or seeing like even like out of the box trades and stuff like that like i find that stuff exciting it doesn't have to be big names but like just out of the box things like the honestly the fujinami move was kind of exciting to me because that was like oh i didn't really see that one coming so um so things like that, I think, are, are fun. But, yeah, if we were looking for, like, a, a big name, a big star, a big blockbuster trade, it didn't happen, and that's fine. Um, but at the end of the day, it just makes for, I don't know, the, the same minutia, the same crap every day. It's like, and you guys hear it from 500 other awesome content creators so and they probably do it even better than i do so i just took a step back a little bit i'll be real i just needed needed a bit of a break and and unless there's like huge news i'm probably not going to be as consistent until games and things start to happen because then that uh, then i'll be here ready to go every day like there'll be something new to talk about so I'm excited for that, um, but until that gets started, until spring training kicks into gear, unless Stearns has some aces up his sleeve, just, it is what it is, so. 
So yeah, just to like finish this out, like I said, I mean, it's been been cool to see Stern's work. Um, I like the direction this team is going. I do think 2025 offseason is going to be even more impactful. Um, I've, I'm excited to see, like, one of the reasons I think we've kind of held off on filling every single spot and signing other guys, besides the fact that they're probably not that great, to be honest, um, is we, Stearns wants to see what these kids can do, right? So I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see some of these kids get a shot this off season or this season, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see where things go, um, and we'll see if if something goes down, if some moves are to be made, then I'll be here to talk about it. I, otherwise, I'm gonna wait till the games start, and then we'll really start cooking and 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 getting into some things. But thanks everybody for watching. Um, if you haven't already, please do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, because I will still be here. I promise you, I'm not going anywhere. Um, permanently it's just been a little bit of a step back just because like i said i just haven't found the, the joy in, in talking about the same stuff over and over I, I just can't do it i'm not one of those guys that can put on a a, a smiley face and just come out here and, and re repeat the same thing like non-stop just why <laughs> um so anyways Let's go Mets. Let's go Knicks. Shout out the Knicks. They they're making noise. Um, I might have to step my my Knicks watching up a bit. So, anyways, appreciate everybody. We'll talk to you soon. L F G M. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for the latest video.